You're listening to the Greeks Gridiron live with Ethan Harista Dulu. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to more of the Greeks Gridiron. I am Ethan Hristadoulou, and today on this June 29th, 2022, we are diving into the conversation of NFL Sunday Ticket. Some news came out the last couple of days. I've been reading through some articles. I saw it was covered on the Pat McAfee show yesterday, and I decided to go ahead and jump in on the conversation, give some of my thoughts, break down the money that's involved, who's involved in potentially purchasing the rights from the NFL. I actually made a video about this last year during the offseason as well so I figured let's circle back revisit it see what we know now as opposed to what we saw last year and kind of compare who was the front runner then to who is the front runner now and everything in between so make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button and comment down below are you somebody who has Sunday ticket do you enjoy it how would you like to see it evolve as it moves from direct TV to somewhere else or just are you somebody who hasn't been able to get direct TV Sunday ticket because maybe you don't have direct TV or you're not a student or you know I think the third option is like if you live in an apartment complex that can't get direct TV you're actually able to get Sunday ticket without having direct TV so there's a few different ways you can manage to uh, get your way into it without having direct TV itself but comment down below let me know what you guys think and let me know what you would like to see come from this once it ends up moving on to a streaming service like Apple TV or you know whatever who else is involved ESPN plus if it ends up being Disney who gets it let me know I would love to hear what you guys think on the subject matter so it came out that Just a couple of days ago, it appears that like the front runners for acquiring the rights to Sunday ticket from the NFL is looking to be either Apple, Amazon, and Disney's also in the conversation, but it sounds like they're less in the conversation than they were last year when things really started to heat up and Sunday ticket became a real topic of conversation. Now, last summer, Disney was kind of the front runner for this year, and there was a big rumor going around that, you know, Disney wanted to acquire the rights and that ESPN Plus would be the place for it to go as ESPN Plus was a little bit newer at the time and people felt like it would be the perfect type of platform to host something like Sunday Ticket. And I, I, to be fair, I really think that it would, to be honest. It, it feels like a the perfect place for it. you know you get a lot of other exclusive sporting content there they already host a ton of games there as it is it feels like ESPN plus is kind of like a no-brainer platform where it's very intuitive and it would it would fit exactly what's going on there already but now it sounds like Apple and Amazon are kind of the front runners here. Now, DirecTV's held the rights to Sunday Ticket since its inception. So it's been there since day one. And I don't know how old Sunday Ticket is. I was trying to find the date for when it first came out for that first season, but I could not find the number. So if anyone knows, please let me know. Uh, but apparently, the, and this number came out, and I did not know that this was the case. DirecTV has been paying $1.5 billion a year to have the rights to Sunday Ticket. And it expires at the end of this season. The NFL has been looking for a 100% increase in the money that they've been making. So yes, that means they have been looking, they're looking and telling, you know, Disney and Apple and Amazon and anyone else that's willing to and interested in listening in on their offers here or just what it is that the NFL wants for an offer. They're looking for $3 billion a season. From what it sounds like, Uh, And Ian Rappaport talked about this on the Pat McAfee show. They have like a seven minute video on it. I definitely recommend you listen to what Pat, um, not Pat McAfee, excuse me. Well, what Pat McAfee has to say, but what Ian Rappaport has to say about the whole situation since he works with NFL media, he's a little bit more on the inside of that sort of thing. So it sounds like he has a somewhat solid idea as to kind of what's going on with the situation, but it sounds like Amazon and Apple are offering somewhere around the ballpark of up to two billion dollars a year for the rights here and disney's actually a little bit behind them with an offer that would sound like it's probably closer to that 1.5 billion direct tv has been paying but we have three massive heavyweights that are in the streaming service right now you have amazon who is a big part of the nfl now with being the one and only place you're going to be able to watch thursday night football games and then of course Apple, someone who, you know, Apple TV, it's a pretty it's pretty cheap for the subscription service. I believe it starts at 4.99, so not really super expensive. They're looking to really get themselves into sports. I know that they I can't remember who it was that they took they took games from. I think Apple now works with baseball. I know that like with the MLB. I know they air games on there, and I think there might be some other stuff that's going on there as well with maybe soccer if I'm not mistaken. So I know Apple's kind of working their way into the sporting world as well. And then Disney, of course, they own ESPN. They already are very much ingrained in the you know sporting world as it is with or without this NFL Sunday ticket package here but it's interesting to see that someone like Disney doesn't really 
feel as inclined to jump into it in terms of the money. You know, I kind of expected that Disney was probably going to be the front runner with just the unlimited amount of dollars that it feels like Disney has. And just the fact that they have like a setup that feels as though it is best fit for supporting what the NFL is already kind of doing with Sunday Ticket at DirecTV. Now, there are some things that sound like they're complicating the deal, and this one was actually pretty surprising to me, but also something I'm kind of happy with, and I'll, and I'll explain it in a second here, but it sounds like the NFL is trying to sell off some of its media operations along with Sunday Ticket, so not only would you be getting Sunday Ticket, but some of their media brand, like some of their just media content overall and, and distribution of it and handling of it, and that includes their mobile operations and when I think of mobile operations I'm assuming that means like their mobile apps and things like that and if that's the case I'm actually all for that and it kind of ties into who I think might end up landing this a little bit later on and we'll get into that more but if you are somebody who's used the NFL mobile app as much as I have, I'm going to assume that you've had as many complications as I have had with that app to where I think for a solid I want to say month, month and a half to maybe almost two months this past season, I couldn't even get the app to open on my phone. And my phone's not old. Like I have a fairly new phone. It's a galaxy. It's not like some rinky dink from like, you know, six or seven years ago. And it's funny to say that because a six or seven year old phone shouldn't sound that old, but in the, in today's day and age it is, but like my phone's only two years old and I couldn't get that app to open for literally a month and a half. And even when it does open and it does work, sometimes I can't get like stats to load up. I can barely get the live games to feed on there. Like it, it has a host of problems. And if they're willing to sell away some of their operations along with Sunday Ticket to a company that wants to take that stuff over, Amazon would be pretty good for that. They already have a really good mobile app for this sort of thing as well when it comes to like viewing and watching things. And I feel like Amazon could take that over and handle that. Apple's another really good option for that as well. Disney, I guess, could really do it too. Like, like I said, they have they work with ESPN and they, they own a host of other things. Realistically, any of the three companies that could take over some of their media operations, especially on the mobile side of things, th good. Because I will tell you right now, I do not think the NFL really has any grasp or idea as to real to make like a good functioning app. It just it it's 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 a, it's a stupid first world problem thing to kind of be complaining about right now. But if it's going to be packaged in with Sunday Ticket, so be it. Good. I'm kind of all for it. Hopefully that gets sorted out and that you know doesn't end up being a roadblock to keep you know one of these three big heavyweights away from trying to pull in their rights to Sunday Ticket. Now it's also worth noting, and this is something that is interesting to me because I think this is going to affect the landscape of just who is actually going to be able to and willing to sign up for something like Sunday Ticket should it go to any of these three uh, street, excuse me, three streaming services. Awful Announcing, which is quite the name there. I love it. Awful Announcing has reported that both CBS and Fox both have clauses in their NFL TV deals that mandate Sunday Ticket be offered at a premium rate. Now, to help you understand, a premium rate is is typically something that's considered it's it's not going to be like a 5 or 10 dollar add-on like you would expect. It's probably going to be something closer to like what Sunday Ticket is offered at right now. And if you're not really sure what Sunday Ticket is priced at, I don't know the exact number. I I, I feel like I found varying numbers and I even pay for it. And I don't even know the exact number to be honest with you, but um, it's going to cost similar to like the, it's around $300 a season or anywhere around like $75 a month, give or take a few dollars here and there. Like I said, I don't know the number off the top of my head and there's like a 50% discount if you're a student, or I think they offer a 50% discount for veterans as well. I could be mistaken in making that up, but I, I think that was in there when I signed up for it. Cause I have a student discount on it. But if that is the case, that does kind of strain the, attractiveness to it, I would say, because rather than it being like, oh yeah, this can be like a $20 add-on that we're going to put on, you know, Apple TV plus or for Amazon Prime's video, like there are infinite channels that you can also pay an add-on as well. Like they, I know they have a Nickelodeon one, an HBO one, all that stuff that does add some strain to it because it's not going to be like a $20 add-on service. It's probably going to be more closer to like 30, 40, maybe $50 as well, like on top of, so it, like the the appeal of, okay, if we have Sunday ticket on our platform, more people are going to want to sign up for it because they're going to want to sign up for Sunday ticket as well, kind of dies down a little bit. And it makes sense now why the NFL is struggling to find that like 3 billion asking price when they're getting deals closer along the lines of like 2 billion, because if you're unable to really have any wiggle room with the pricing for a package like this and you can't appeal to 
people that don't necessarily have $300 to drop on the spot for Sunday ticket for the whole year or aren't willing to take on what like amounts to like an internet bill or a phone bill in, in, in NFL football content so you can watch the out of market games you want to watch. It, it definitely hurts the attractiveness to the package, I would say. That's not something that I actually knew was the case. And when I read that, that was pretty surprising to me because last year when I talked about this, my thing was like, oh, yeah, if they're going to get it to like, you know, Amazon, whoever it may be, whoever was in the big, you know, whoever was considered the leader at the time, I think Disney was like the real hot name for it last year during the summer. I thought if this is like an extra 10, 15, 20 dollars on top of it, like that's easy money for for like someone like me to throw out where I, you know, I could I, I like I would sub to that any day. But now if it's going to cost me 50 dollars a month or say anywhere from 200 and 200 to 250, maybe 300 dollars again for the year, like, is it really do I really want it that badly? You know, I, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how that whole thing shakes out and it'll, and something else to keep in mind if a deal like this doesn't end up working out with any of these big three companies here NFL plus is launching within the next like month or two Ian Rappaport said he thinks it's going to be like sometime in July or August is when it's going to be coming out for the public um, the pricing was rumored at five dollars a month but it could be higher than that maybe closer to like ten dollars or somewhere maybe in between but maybe if you know and that's supposed to include like game pass and a host of other like content that you're not necessarily seeing already out there on instagram and facebook and youtube and, and all those places that host digital media for the football teams already or just the nfl as a whole there's going to be access to all this stuff here and i'm assuming if they can't get a deal done but i feel they will but you know on the off chance that they can't and they just can't get them the dollars right or whatever it may be nfl plus might end up being the you know the route to go for how they choose to distribute sunday ticket and rather than going through another service and leaving it up to them to decide the nfl could just pocket all the money and you know and cut out the middle man and that might help the pricing a little bit because they don't have to go through somebody else so that's something to you know also keep in mind as well there's a lot of interesting scenarios i would say that can come out of this all now it does leave me with a few questions here that i'm asking you guys as i'm answering myself so as i ask these questions out loud and kind of answer them feel free to comment down below and give me your thoughts as well um so the first question obviously that comes to mind is like who do i think or want necessarily to you know, end up with the rights to this. Now, I've thought a lot about this. And when I heard that the media operations was kind of being tied into this, especially the mobile stuff as well, the first one that really made sense to me was Apple TV. I don't necessarily want it to go to Apple. I've never been an Apple person, but it would make sense in the realm of if they're really going to push like other media content into the packaging and if it, and specifically the mobile aspect of it, who better than apple themselves like a you know a mobile tech giant on their own it would almost make sense so like if i was to pick out of one of these three right now and they're also someone who does not really have like a super established relationship with the nfl that would benefit from trying to build something with them by like taking over the rights to sunday ticket it almost makes a lot of sense that Apple would be the one who ends up winning this whole little duel here, especially because it really sounds like it's between them and Amazon. Now, Amazon, obviously, they're, you know, they're good in the tech industry themselves. They're no slouches. We're not going to sit here and discredit them, but they already have Thursday night football. So there is like less of an inclination on their part to, to you know, throw every single dollar at them possible. They already have this monstrous relationship that they've, they've you know, established and built now with the hosting of Thursday night so there is less inclination there and then when you look at disney that almost makes sense to me why they're not as willing to throw all the money and probably kind of okay with not getting it is because they already have so many tv deal rights and things like that on their own coupled with the fact that they stream games off of espn plus for hockey for football or not football excuse me the you know college sports they do i know baseball as well i like they have everything on espn plus that you could imagine sports wise minus like nfl things that don't have to do with monday night football so so they, they don't necessarily need that either. So it almost makes sense that Apple would be the people that end up getting it. If I was to name somebody that I want to get it, I would feel like I would want Amazon to get it. And the reason for that is because when you think of the whole premium subscription thing that it's going to have to be based off of CBS and Fox's clauses that they have with their TV deals in the NFL, because Prime is already fairly expensive on its own to have, 
and then you have to offer assuming you know another maybe a, a, a subscription price within having prime video to be able to subscribe to the nfl sunday ticket i almost feel like they could use the price of prime as a way to kind of mitigate that pricing and be able to like have the subscription channel be a little bit lower Obviously, there's going to be a lot of money thrown at the NFL. They're going to try to figure out a way to recoup as much as possible of $2 billion that they're going to spend yearly for this. But you can say, all right, well, we're already charging people. I think it's like $160 now or $170 a year for Prime. I pay for it. I honestly don't know what it is. I just gets charged every year off my card. But if you think about that, coupled with like, let's say another maybe $50 subscription fee or something along those lines a month, maybe 40 or 30, 35, if you could get away with doing something like that, then it kind of opens up, you know, who can actually get Sunday ticket a little bit more because, you know, people are already paying a somewhat premium fee for the Amazon Prime service as a whole anyways. And, you know, video is obviously included with it. So I think that kind of mitigates the pricing a little bit. And I think that would ultimately lead to the lowest like cost per se that you're paying out of pocket monthly or yearly for the subscription on top of obviously having to pay for Prime on its own. But it, there's it, it, there's like some mental math and numbers you can kind of play around with to make things work where people don't feel like they're paying as much out of pocket to also subscribe for Sunday Ticket, especially if they're already a Prime member. So I would like to see it maybe go to Amazon. But if I was to pick one that I think it's going to go to, I feel like Apple almost makes sense as like the they have the most to gain out of the whole situation. Now, as for what I think pricing is going to look like, it's probably going to be expensive. I'm assuming if if it has to be a premium and it's going to be closer to what the, you know you have to pay from Directv, maybe it's a little bit cheaper. Maybe we're looking at like two hundred dollars for the year, and then you know you divide that by four, and you're looking at like the fifty dollars a month or whatever. That seems to be like more so what we might be looking at, unless they stay closer to that three hundred mark, and then you're looking at like closer to the seventy five dollars a month deal, whatever it may be. But it sounds like it's going to have to be somewhat expensive. I initially thought that we were probably looking at maybe like a hundred bucks for the season, something like that, maybe 150 if they wanted to really try to milk it a little bit, but also make it more available to people. But it sounds like it's going to be pricier and that's not great in my opinion, but it is what it is. Like, you know, you can't really argue these multi-billion dollar TV deals and their, their clauses to make sure that they're not losing money because ultimately CBS and Fox have a lot to lose here. If people are just going to the streaming services to watch games and, you know, they're flat out not watching TV anymore, like that hurts them and they're making <clears throat> essentially less money off those TV deals, you know? So it does, definitely does hurt the product in a, in a sense. Now, if I was... If how would I like like to see this service be offered? I would like to see it just be an, an add on to whoever it goes to, whether it's Prime. I don't want it to. I don't think it needs to become like its own standalone thing. Just make it an add on to whatever it is that like whatever streaming platform it goes on. And as for like how I would like to see it divvied up in an ideal world. I would love for it to be like an a la carte type thing where you can go team by team and you know subscribe to each individual team for certain prices or maybe you could even subscribe to like divisions or conferences or just like the entire NFL if you wanted to see. I would love to see a sort of like variance for the entire thing. I don't want it to just be solely here is the NFL Sunday ticket give us $250. Like if you could try to mitigate that in a sense where Fans could just pay for the one team that they want to see. If I'm an out-of-market fan of a team and I live on the East Coast, but my team's on the West Coast or whatever it may be, I would love to see them kind of open it up in that sense. Or maybe I'm, you know, I'm a diehard Colts fan and I want to be able to watch every AFC South game because I want to know what the Jaguars and the Texans and the Titans are doing alongside obviously watching my Indianapolis Colts play through the year. I want to be able to check their games out and see how they're doing so I know how my team fares when they actually do end up meeting twice a season. Things like that would be really intriguing to me. That's something that I would really hope to see come from this all. Do I think it's going to happen Probably not, especially with, again, with the CBS and Fox clause in their TV deals. I think that really hurts what this could potentially be. And that's going to have to be something that I think gets adjusted down the road. But for right now, we'll have to probably deal with and kind of make do with what limited opportunity you kind of have with right now because of the way these tv deals are set up but i would love for it to become like a full-blown like you can just pay for the team you want to see and leave it at that i would oh my i would do anything as a football fan to see something like that happen uh, if if that ends up being the case like hell yeah that's awesome 
the odds of that happening, I would give it like less than a 15% chance, I would say. But that's like in a dream scenario, a la carte, I can pick by team, division, conference. If I want to just watch just the AFC or, you know, who get, who gives a crap about the NFC or whatever it may be, I would love to see something along those lines. But I would love to know what you guys think about this whole thing. I think that Sunday Ticket, is, it's been a very elusive type of thing where only some people have had it and not a lot of people have really gotten to enjoy the NFL that way. This past season was the first year I ever got to use Sunday Ticket like that. And let me tell you, it was an awesome experience as a diehard football fan. And I think that it being opened up to more people, not being locked away to direct TV is a step in the right direction, but we need to, I would love to see the NFL really open up the floodgates and get really creative with just how available this ends up being. And whether it's through one of those big streaming services or through NFL plus on their own, which I think if they did NFL plus would allow them to maybe do a little bit more with it and make it a little bit more available. That would be something, especially because when you think of going through streaming services, Fox and CBS, CBS are probably going to be a little bit more like they're going to be a little bit more closed off and reserved about what they would allow the NFL to do. But if it's just the NFL solely, they're not worried about people going to other places, to other networks, to other things to watch. You know, they just know it's their partner. The NFL is streaming these games as well. So it's a, I feel like it's a little bit different when you think about it that way. But love to hear what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section down below. We're like 20 minutes into this. I did not expect this video to be this long, but I appreciate you guys for hanging out. If you've made it this far, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.